all? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just reading page two of seven, the basis and reasoning for the opinions. Yeah. Defendant self-report. Mm -hmm. The following psychosocial history was supplied solely by the defendant self-report mm -hmm. and is thus limited by the credibility of the defendant. <laughs> Only that subset of information relevant to the purpose of this evaluation is reported here. Mm -hmm. And if therefore does not represent a complete history, and it therefore does not represent a complete history of the defendant. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, uh, there's some limiting of my credibility as a defendant. And as much as I self-reported this, um, you don't have to believe any of it. Well, Paul Budnick was born in Auburn on July 13th, of 1970, to married parents who were divorced eight years later. Mm -hmm. But you're limited on the credibility of myself as a defendant. Mm -hmm. Now, we found out that they were married, but it was a fraudulent marriage application and a uh, fraudulent marriage certificate. Yes. Did anybody fact check the actual ages of my parents at the time of their marriage? <laughs> Now, I know it's a psychosocial history mm -hmm. that was supplied by myself solely by the defendant's self-report and is thus uh, limited mm -hmm. by the credibility of the defendant. Now, after the divorce, mm -hmm. uh, he primarily resided with his mother but saw his father on occasional weekends and in the summer. Mm -hmm. Now, you probably don't want to believe that, but... It's actually what did take place. Mm -hmm. Now, I he had one full biological sister and two stepsisters oh, from his mother's marriage to his stepfather. Yes. Uh, it is true mm -hmm. that Susan Bowers uh, was named Susan Taylor. Yes, before her first marriage. Mm -hmm. Could have been her only marriage. <laughs> and that her actual birth name was Budneck. Which, and that would be the one biological sister. Yep. Yeah. And then when my mother married Douglas Taylor, he had two daughters, and those were known as the two stepsisters from my mother's marriage to my stepfather, Douglas Taylor. Yes. Now, uh, Mr. Budnick uh -huh, denied a history of mental illness in his family of origin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But his father was an alcoholic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you would say that alcoholism is a mental illness or mental defect, but there are some chemical effects of alcohol that could in some way pickle your brain. <laughs> now, Mr. Budnick denied had any developmental problems or being abused or neglected during his formative years. Yes. Now, I know that you're probably saying I was developmentally disabled while growing up. And I only got a 3.0 grade point average during junior high and high school. Yes. Went to Jefferson Elementary, mm -hmm. Sacagawea Junior High. Yes. I went to Lewis and Clark High School for three years, and I was an exchange student my senior year of high school. Yes. And I was a student at North Sunville Gymnasium uh, for my senior year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, abuse or neglect. Well... You know, I had a paper out from the time I was 11 years old. Yes. I did grow up uh, in poverty. Yeah. My stepfather had Meniere's disease. And approximately one year after my mother's marriage to him, uh, they applied for Social Security. And for most of my formative years, yes, uh, we lived on Social Security and the minimum wage jobs that my mother had. Yes. Now, she worked at the IGA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she got a job as a para-pro at Sacagawea Junior High working with uh, disabled children. Oh. <laughs> now, I know that you probably don't believe the credibility of what I just said. But I can prove everything. Yes. Now, there's this issue of abuse or neglect during my formative years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you kind of learn to live with Meniere's disease, obviously, when your stepfather has to take Valium every day. Mm -hmm. You think, well, he has an illness known as Meniere's disease, and that's why he receives Social Security disability. Yes. And it wasn't the drinking or me being introduced to smoking pot when I was 14 years old by my stepfather. Yes, 
It wasn't this idea that you should learn how to drink when you're a teenager. Yes. But a lot of this uh, supposed abuse or neglect um, during the, the formative years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I learned not to drink alcohol from the time I was 22 years old. Now, my education, oh, marital history and employment. Oh, Mr. Budnick attained a bachelor's degree in organizational management. Oh from Kirkland uh -huh, Northwest University, which he described as a private Christian college. <laughs> now, you probably don't believe the credibility of that, but I did provide uh, copies of my associate's degree, yes, and my bachelor's degree. <laughs> and it just seems like right now, you're so bent on putting me in jail. Mm -hmm. That you seem to forget that as soon as you say, well, there's a limited amount of credibility. Yes. I would say that I've documented everything that I've said. Mm -hmm. Now, this thought of me renting a room where the rent wasn't paid this month. You know, we ran out of coffee this morning. And I do feel that it's, well, it's an obligation mm -hmm. that I inform the landlord, the owner of the house, any time that we run out of something. <laughs> and... Um, if she decides or not decides whether or not she's going to spend her money, yes. I didn't make that decision for her. Mm. Now, when you live in a location where you have a relationship with the other person that lives there, yeah. I have found in the last six months of living there that I've done everything with the landlord. Mm. See, we went together to Oli Cap. Yes. And we got the $150 deposit and $200 of the first half month. We went to St. Vincent de Paul's together ooch, and got another $100. Oh. And then we together applied for the rental assistance so that we together, yes, <laughs> would help each other. <laughs> now, after six months right now, I would say that I did nothing different than what I've done every day living there. Yes. I've informed her at different times when we run out of creamer. Oh. When we run out of coffee, ooch, when we run out of coffee uh, filters. <laughs> now, did somebody say right now that in some way I'm committing elder abuse mm -hmm. for just letting them know, oh, we did everything together. Now, uh, police department, yes. Mm -hmm. If you were making a show this morning, yes, and you're abusive to the woman that has... Uh, rented me a room. Yes. Mm -hmm. I documented everything for welfare. Yes. 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 Now, uh, the individual that I really do care about. Yes. I emailed the police department just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Some documentation about being a boarder. Yes. And as it says, uh, I estimated $1 a day worth of coffee. All right. $1 a day worth of creamer. Mm -hmm. And $1 a day worth of cereal. Mm -hmm. Now, she was so good as to get me a box of Cheerios, yes, and a box of the uh, toasted O's when they went to Walmart. Yes, she did. <laughs> and uh, she was so good mm -hmm. in that, right, um, she pays for the coffee, creamer, and cereal each day. Mm -hmm. Now, when you actually document in welfare, yes, that the conversation we had this morning was not abusive. Mm -hmm. It could be that Officer Sanchez, Police Chief Cherie Crane, yes, Police Chief uh, Brian Smith, yes, and uh, Sheriff Bill Benedict would seriously consider exactly what he just said. I'm doing mm -hmm, what we have done oops, since I moved in there. Oh. So for the next time that you decide to make a show where you suggest, well, if you just use less coffee, it's actually a dollar a day, a dollar a day, oh, and a dollar a day, <laughs> $90 a month. Now, as I explained, yes. If we run out of rent because nobody pays the rent, <laughs> I have no expectation that the landlord, ooch, is going to pay for anything that she doesn't have the money to pay for. Now, maybe you could stop screwing around today and really take into consideration <laughs> documented Pope. The landlord pays the following each month. <laughs> now, I'd like to have my... <laughs> 